Welcome back to the Live Lift Love podcast, PEDs, Positive and Enriching Discussions. I'm your host, Clifford Genese, and today I'm joined by a super producer. I, I call you super producer. You, you super producer. <laughs> yeah, uh, HB, HB, I appreciate I, I, that. I'm, I'm calling you HBJ, um, but you go by Hits by Jude. Um, yeah, what's up, man? How's everything? Everything's good, man. Thank you for having me on. It's an honor just to chop it up with you like we always do. Conversation is always great, so this is going to be a good one. Yeah, yeah, so we've known each other. I think I said earlier, early it's been like, it's been going on two years um, mm-hmm. and connected through, through TikTok. And I, today, earlier, like right before we recorded this, I was realizing that a lot of my good grown-up uh, relationships or friendships come from social media because right. it, social media is like a, a, a space where you can just kind of be a version of yourself and the right people connect with you. And, you know, I reached out to you like two years ago, just about this music project that I had in mind. And you were the first person I connected with. Um, mm-hmm. I think, yeah, you, and yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been a dope journey ever since just connecting, learning more about your, your music palette, your inspiration, um, seeing you evolve as a artist and producer and just chopping it up about like life and finding a lot of parallels and similarities. Um, so let's kick off with, you know, just you sharing a bit about yourself, you know, where you're from, culture, anything and everything that's relevant to you at this moment. Now, I appreciate the time, you know, um, I agree with you. Um, social media is definitely that space where we could find people who are similar to us and what's funny is that we didn't know as much as we do now about each other when I first connected with you I just liked your concepts and then once we connected lo and behold you're an artist uh and I I, I still say I still say aspiring I don't I still don't (laughs) consider myself an artist because I haven't dropped anything but I I appreciate that I appreciate that definitely man definitely it's the art is there and um we've uh con- we've been able to connect and it's it's dope that uh that all these things just transpired um to to talk about myself i'm from brooklyn new york just like you uh and um I'm a haitian kid grew grew up in a single parent home and uh music was always around me art whether it was uh through drawing uh through music um i always found a way to express myself uh grew up the oldest of of four boys Damn. and uh yeah <laughs> I, I, I didn't figure you were the oldest but that's that's dope to know so i yeah. feel like you have a you have a very uh young and jovial energy about you so i figured you uh you, you're a bit you're a bit younger you know my brothers it was like i i took it upon myself to bring the fun I always had this concept you know and it's not nothing new but it's that you know I bring the fun wherever it is I was never afraid to go to places that some might seem boring because growing up we were sheltered so we had to figure out how to create the fun and um, my brothers I don't know if they really depended on me I don't think they would say that but I kind of just it came up with the ideas and uh music was something that was that was always around what and, kind of uh, what kind yeah. of music did you did you listen to growing up I'm, I'm like my mother we at my home at my crib we used to do uh like weekend music my mother would work every other weekend so on the, on the weekend she was home it was just compa music um you know yep. t-vice um yep. I, I actually went through a bunch of her records you know sweet mickey but i actually went through a yep. bunch of her records last week she she played a, used to play a lot of like Italian music, French music. So oh. what, what was what was the music ex- experience like at your crib? It was the T Vice. It was the Sweet Mickey. It was also the the church music, the okay. um, Limage. Uh, I, I'm forgetting the other names, but uh, Dewonet, the Dewonet brothers. Okay. Um, and and a little bit of Celine Dion. I don't I don't know how Celine Dion <laughs> got into it, but I guess she has songs in French too. And okay. my mom speaks French, so um, yeah, Celine Dion made it in there, and that kind of introduced me to pop music. So I I also have a thing for that as well, the ballads, um, 
MJ was popular. You know, they couldn't resist that. They didn't grow up with it, but they came to America and that was just the 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 type of music going on in the eighties. Right. And uh that that stuck with me. So I grew up on MJ eighties uh pop music, uh uh religious uh christian music and ancient music the the compa all that like at my crib we didn't my mother my mother my parents didn't play any type of american music like i didn't uh, really okay. get in get into like rap music until like high school um mm -hmm. i really didn't like any i didn't like american artists that much and like even to this day i, I kind of I, I really don't like most most of the female artists I like are international in some scope. Um, for me, there's just like this different linear perspective. Like you talked about the pop ballads, like some of the a lot of the records my mother's played, like they were like disco tunes. So I grew yeah. up listening to like this nice these nice party records that were f like full and rich that had all these like multiple layers and elements. And listening to like hip hop and American music growing up initially, it felt very this bland. And linear um and i didn't i didn't really get drawn into that until later 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 on in life so it's dope to to hear that you know you like your mom found celine dion and like knowing right. that you know uh you know immigrant parents they always find these american artists to kind of latch on to and like introduce us to and i, I always try to you always try to see how your parents relate to the artist or like you know what what did you love about celine dion mom like what did you love about this person that kind of brought it up you know it, it was i guess it was because that was the first type of music where i understood what they were saying okay you, you kind of just hear music it's like background music but then you hear english words it's like hold on what's what's going on here right who is this and um it just stuck. It just stuck with me. Uh, and that was kind of like growing up in church too. Growing up, um, hearing the preacher speaking Creole, I understood. But the minute you hear like a preacher speaking in English, it's like, hold on, you know, I'm I'm hearing the word now, and you take it as it is, good or bad, you know. So was English your second language? English was, I would say so. I I grew up speaking Creole with my grandmother and my mom and then I just learned English in school but English is just like it feels like my first language what drew you to church um as a kid well most kids dislike church like I I, I never I liked going too. to church I never liked I it. <laughs> did not like it at all I did not like that I can't remember a memory where I was like wow this is this is cool there was like <laughs> there was a one service where I was like man I maybe I've been I was wrong about this you know I wasn't drawn to it but it was part of my childhood and uh I appreciate it you know there was some some lessons there that uh I applied in my life in my more stoic phase so how do you how did you navigate brooklyn i mean i think how old are you again i'm 32 30, damn you you young you a lot younger than i thought <laughs> <laughs> i'll be 33 in january all right, all right. um yeah. how, do you, how, how do you navigate brooklyn right? i feel like that's always a challenge especially i mean all of brooklyn wholeheartedly but yeah. you know canarsie yeah. i grew Oof. up in flatbush they're tricky spaces to to navigate and even especially you being an older brother like i guess for one how did you navigate and how did you help your younger brothers navigate living through brooklyn um i navigated with um just understanding the culture um i grew up in a in a different culture at home but once i stepped outside it was totally different the kids were different uh luckily i grew up in a black community so everyone kind of looked like me. They weren't always the the most friendliest. It was very tough environment. Um, at, at times I had wished that we grew up somewhere else, you know? And uh, looking back now, I, I still see it as like, wow, that was a tough upbringing, uh, being bullied. Uh, but what helped was music. I remember being able to connect on rap music with my bullies like they would they would listen to music and 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 I was like always hip on technology 
um, I would be at home a lot of the times growing up. I was sheltered. So I made the the mixtape CDs right, right. and I would bring them to school and the other kids would be like, man, they, they, they weren't really up on that type of stuff. You know, they were playing outside, but I would put, the songs together, the the best songs, my favorite songs, I would, you know, gift it to girls on Valentine's Day. <laughs> that was gonna be my that was gonna be my next question. That was gonna definitely be my you next know, question. Man, what? Man, I wonder if this one girl, I wonder if she still has it, but I it was a dope CD. I I just I that's that was my way in, you know, just being able to just navigate through through music and connecting with with uh uh my my peers yeah, mu- music is i mean it, it's known like music is the the common denominator it transcends language uh energy um yep. so did you did you i mean it's i think it's dope but from what you're saying that you know it's dope that you realize and recognize that very early on in life like you realize there was a lot of power behind the music and the artistry um i think on my end it was just something to listen to, something to talk about with my friends. I didn't view music and artistry as power uh, because I, I like going back to being sheltered. I lived a very sheltered life too, but my my focus was just very linear on school, like you know, traditional Haitian household. Yeah, go to yeah. school, <laughs> you know, come home before this time. You know, I wanted to be a dentist growing up, and you too, man. <laughs> you wanted to be a dentist. I did. And <laughs> yes. I went to college thinking I was up here. De- yo, we, we're not, still finding stuff out about yo, each other. That's why. Yeah. So I just did this. Um, you know, I mentioned I got a, a new job at this nonprofit that helps students. Yeah. And I did like this panel talking about uh, my education. So I went to Bridgeport, University of Bridgeport, for, to oh, study okay. dental hygiene for two years. And my goal was to get my associate, start working as a hygienist. Um, and then transition into like you know get my bachelor's degree and then dental school so i did the two years of dental hygiene i i, I was just terrible I'm, I'm bad at math and science like I I, I I i i appreciate them as concepts to like learn and explore but like pen to paper memory like I, 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 that's that's not me at all and, 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 and it was bo- it was boring too like it i, I wanted something that was interactive and you know thinking about where i am now in life in terms of like marketing and wanting to be an artist to me there needs to be some type of direct communication and inspiration and having my hand in someone's mouth like that doesn't add any value to my yeah. life it I, does to I their life that. but t- tell me about like what what, what led to you want to become a dentist that's, that's hilarious man you know it, <laughs> if you, if you say the same really... thing as me it'll be hilarious dog <laughs> it'll be hilarious. oh man you know what now that it, it stemmed in high school i was okay. in dental laboratory okay. and i went to clara bar in high school oh i almost went there my mom was oh, like nah don't man. go there my mom was like, "Told I got born. You're not, you're not going there." Oh man, I wish, I wish they told me that. Um, so they had the dental program, and when I got to college, I met my mentor who wanted to be a dentist. He told his story to a group of us, and I was like, "Oh, this is my trajectory." Seeing another black man, that it it made sense. It was like, okay, this was what I was supposed to do. And uh, started taking the same science classes, the math classes. I flunked one, and I was just like, "Yeah, this this ain't it." <laughs> this ain't it took it one. He checked yeah, out. That's right. It took that pre calculus. Ooh, man, I, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. So, yeah, that that's my dental story. It was it it started in high school. It was a, a form of dentistry, of um, working with the dentists and things like that. And I thought that's what I wanted to do. But it was just seeing someone that looked like me saying they wanted to do it and actually right. on the path to do it made it seem possible to me. Uh, but uh, he had other skills and talents, too. He was one of the reasons also that that pushed me in music. He had he was a he's a, he was an artist in his day. He, he had his own music group. Um, he's the reason why I actually started the music group with my brother, um, the music group Merlot Inc. around 2010, 2011, when I was in college. Okay. And um, I was like, yeah, I think 
you might be able to teach me something about that. And uh, I'll let that other dream go. Is he still your mentor? Or do you he's still more connect? like a big brother now. Okay. Um, he's he's in the fashion he always was since I met him. And uh, he's always still encouraging me, but I'm finding my own way right now. The Live, Lift, Love podcast is sponsored by the Black Excellence Shop. Shop our Black Excellence calendar journal and bundle at blackexcellencedaily.com and download the Black Excellence Daily app for Android and iOS. Learn, journal, inspire. Blackexcellencedaily.com. So he's more like a big brother. I wouldn't label him mentor. Right. I used to say that a lot. Right, right, right. So what's the, what, what was the, I guess, what was after dentistry? Once you realized it wasn't for you, what, what did you uh, ch change your degree to? Um, well, I saw that I liked public speaking and I, I was always nervous speaking in front of groups of people. And I, I looked at it as a challenge. So I, I went into speech communications um, only because you know, I didn't think about the job I could get after college. I just looked at the skill and the skill that I really wanted to overcome, especially in seeing my mentor. He was a great uh, public speaker as well. I wanted to learn that. I wanted to learn that whether it was performing on stage or whether it was inspiring young men, uh, young black men who who may have grown up in the inner city in the urban environment, you know, who may not have had a dad around. Uh, I wanted to speak to them and tell them like, hey, look, I I made it to college. You right, know, right. That now that's like common, but growing up for, for me, I didn't I did not see that. I did not see that on my block. And um yeah, I wanted to speak to to speak to that crowd. Did you see so, that in your group of friends and peers? I started seeing that more once I got to college. Um, I started meeting a lot of intelligent individuals. To this day, they they made uh, a lot of themselves. So the world is a lot much more bigger than Canarsie. That's that's yeah. that's the realization. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll touch on uh, pass, I, I know I say passport bro culture, um, yeah. but I, I don't really I don't I don't know if you consider yourself a passport bro. But we'll we'll, we'll jump into that in a bit. Um, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate you, <laughs> yeah. you said, So you said you, you formed a group with your brother in 2010. What was the music journey up to that point for you? Up to that point, I was always rapping, but I, I was always just interested in rapping and writing. And then um, my mentor sparked it up. Merlo Inc. We what he showed me a video of Diddy saying, "You see these eyes? These eyes are always they stay Merlo because we get no sleep." That was our whole gist. It's like we're hardworking college students. We grind. We we made like an album about just you know grinding, and uh, I got to hone in my craft with recording, uh, and slowly made it into to producing my own beats because we got tired of rapping on industry beats so right. started making beats i wasn't hit by jude at that time i was just uh what was i what did i go by i think i just went by ab uh, alex okay. ballon yeah, yeah. so um i started producing for the group and i got to hone my skills as a producer then i uh moved into beats by jude and then that's essentially hits by Jude. So yeah, I guess tell me more about the group experience. Um, what did you, what did you realize from the experience? Right? Did you, did you realize like you're more your group person? Do you work better individually? Like what what manifested from that experience for you? That's a good question. Um, with the group, we we were really just having fun. Um. Me and my brother, we had made the music and then we uh, brought in a friend. He had his own project, uh, Kevin Laurent. He uh, he was a super nice rapper. I, I actually engineered that project. It was kind of going on at the same time. He saw that we were doing that and he's like, I can rap. 
and he really could. So then we kind of were doing our own projects. Me and my brother, we never made a project together after the first one. I mean, just us two. We all three eventually came together and created a project. But uh, as a group, we it just worked. We had a little buzz at, at York College where I went. Me and my friend, we both went to York. And my brother went to NYU. So he was our in to performing at some shows at NYU. Nice. And uh, we we met a lot of great people. Um, and we we had a, a blast. It, it was something that I would say we really took it seriously. We thought we would have blew up through it because it, it, the people received as well. This was before like, social media we we were face to face with people and and the way they received us it was just like this is something special and um after the group collaboration the uh, the collab project that we all three made we just kind of just kept the foot on the wheel but i knew for me i wanted to make money out of it um uh, so that's how Hits by Jew came along. Okay. Um, the group kind of, it just kind of, it, 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 it fizzled out, but uh, the we all still make music. We all still make music and we're probably always going to. What, what caused it to fizzle out? You said that you wanted to make money. Did you feel like they, the, the other, other group members didn't want to make money? Or oh, they no. They, it? Okay. They're definitely making money through it but i knew i had learned the skill through the group and uh for me it was like i'm i'm getting good at this so you, so you um, abandoned a group to get to chase the I, paper i would say so i think, <laughs> I think yeah i think i think i abandoned the group for sure That's because real. um yeah yeah i abandoned the group but they also did too <laughs> You know, but to do great things like, uh, man, I wish I could, uh, you know, promote their music more. But they, they, they make great music to this day, and and it's we we still support each other. I I might even still uh, get placements on, on uh, my friend my friend's uh, new project or future projects. We'll always work together, but right. Merlo Inc. It, it's like. Is a lot of maintenance. It's so easy for me to just make beats and, and promote my own brand. Yeah, I feel like maybe you were the anchor. Maybe I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going back to the idea of like you being the the, the older brother, yeah. and maybe you being the anchor because you know may, maybe the producer in that sense is the anchor, right? And yeah, you 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 know you transition onto solo work and you know wanting to create for more different people, so. Maybe yeah. it kind of fizzles, fizzles, fizzles out naturally. So, right. what, what kind of duo were you and your brother? Um, like when I, when I think of a rap or a music duo, I, I yeah. thought of thinking of a uh, my G my, my my G Jordan. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's what I, that's that's what I kind of envisioned for you and you and uh you and your brother. You know, we we around the time when we came out with the album, Watch the Throne had dropped. So okay. we were really like the back and forth rap. You write four bars, I write four bars. We we were rap heavy, but my brother really could like I'd say he could really could sing. He was he was the singer of the group, so he would sing the hooks. Um, and but he's a nice rapper too. Uh, might be better than me, um, but I've caught up to him now. <laughs> but, but he was he had he just he was just a natural right at the time. And uh, we were more of like a hip hop, like a, a young J. Cole Drake. Not to say we were on their levels, but like if you think young J. Cole Drake, right, right, right. rapping, prowess, they just wanted to rap. They, that's what we were trying to be. So what was the what was the uh, early experience for HBJ like? I, I keep saying HB8 for, for <laughs> Hits by Jude. Um you, you know, you you branched out on your own. So, what what was the what were those early early experiences like? How how was it um, finding artists to work with or being called on by artists to create and support their project? I got lucky. I came around the time when the online scene was popping, okay. and I came across Airbit, 
and I made like my first sale. It was like 10, 15 bucks. I'm like, okay. Then I had like a $2,000 week in like 2016. Damn. At this time, I'm thinking, oh, I could quit my job. <laughs> it's over now, you know? And um, that's exactly what I did. I was working at Enterprise Car Rental. And, uh, and I was like, man, you know, I I could sell online. I'm meeting artists. I'm connecting with them. I'm collecting emails. I'm I'm going to go full ahead on this, full, full on. And um, so the early stages was really Airbit. Airbit was allowed me to to connect with artists from all over the world. And um, what, what's what's Airbit? Was, I'm I'm not familiar with it. And I guess Airbit some people is like a beat stars. Okay. Airbit is like a a beat platform, beat seller pr- platform where you could connect with uh, artists as a producer and sell your beats, lease it, uh, sell exclusive rights. It's pretty cool. Got it, got it. And then from there. Uh, I started struggling. <laughs> uh, you know, I quit the job and then things slowed down. Things slowed down crazy. Um, I don't know why. I guess that I came in at the time when a lot of producers caught on. And uh, at this time, a lot of producers were making a killing through Airbit. But uh, I came in kind of like at a sweet spot right before it started getting saturated. So. Um, yeah, and, and and you know, I, I didn't really understand the game. I just had the talent. Right. So when it started to matter, like understanding the business aspect, that's when it's kind of like you kind of needed to understand the business. So uh, that's that was my journey. Um, through it, I've met a lot of artists. I met one of the biggest artists that I work with now, Sydney Renee. She's a... Uh, she found me on Instagram through a song that I had with a another artist, and um, I was able to produce like three or three or four of her albums, full projects. And uh, yeah, credit all that to me kind of branching off and just just find, finding that lane for myself. Would you do anything different back then? Like, would you have stayed at Enterprise a bit longer? Oof, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. My peers now are like six figures. They're all making like six figures. I could have used that money to to fund um hits by Jew right. way further. Um and even just above that, I could have uh traveled the world a little bit in between while working, build up that professional career. Uh but there were some things in, in my music journey, like learning the importance of certain things, like not even learning the actual thing itself, but learning that this is important. If I was at work, I probably would not have have uh, learned that, you right. know, this was like mid journey in the middle of this whole journey from the point where I started to where I'm at now, there was a, a month. I think that month when I quit, uh, I started struggling immediately <laughs> and I was looking for answers and I found one. It wasn't the complete answer, but it was an answer that it's just like, this is, this all makes sense. You know, I wouldn't have cared for this if I was working, you know, learning how to mix, knowing the importance of mixing and then going after it. Um, what was the answer? It was it was learning how to mix like certain things needed to sound good. Yes, you have the raw talent to just put it together, but now you need to learn the business aspect. That month away from enterprise gave me I did hop back into the workforce again, but that month was crucial. You started struggling. You found the magic. You found like you found the the next layer of your artistry. What was the strategy from there for you? Mm, that's a good question. From there, I, I got back into working and uh, I knew I had to just find a balance. And it's really been business. It's been business from that point on. Um, I had faith that I'll always continue 
uh, to absorb like inspiration and constantly be inspired by the music that was out um, and just listening to my peers. So I, I work, I work more closely with artists. That's why Sydney came along. Uh, there was Kevin Antonio and there were a few other uh, artists that it kind of helped me get into the spaces that I normally wouldn't have gotten into and kind of seeing what, what the artists needed. So um, artists always just gave me good feedback on my beats. Uh, I'm thankful for, for, I just mentioned him, Ke Kevin Antonio. He told me one time, he he's one of the reasons why I went, uh, why I turned from Beats by Jew to Hits by Jew because he told me that I had like a top 40 sound and um, that kind of just made me think that, okay, these are not just beats, but these are potential hits. Right, right, right. And um, the feedback that artists have given me has always just been able to help me grow. And so... Um, while I had my beats on online and selling it online, I took more focus on working with artists more personally now that I had some sort of a clientele to, to work with. What's what's one of the most important things for you when it comes to nurturing artist relationships? Oh, honesty. Honesty. Yeah. Um, music is so fickle. The industry is so fickle and and everyone, it feels like everyone is lying. Um, you know, it's <laughs> just, it just, it's just like, man. Um, so the greatest thing you could give an artist is is that brutal honesty before they have to either get it from the world or not really not understanding why the music isn't clicking. Because right. sometimes people won't tell you, you know, I. I'm sure there are friends of mine who don't like my music, but they 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 don't care enough to say like it's not good, or maybe it's not bad, but it's like it's not their 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 taste. But they won't even tell me that at times. You know that would be helpful. It's not that you like it, you don't, or you're hating, or you're not. It's just it's just not for me. Right, right, right. Um. So that that brutal honesty and and for me personally when i'm given that brutal honesty knowing where i am with my own like just journey in life so that is coming from a neutral place not um out of hate or you know or just because you're my friend or it's it's really like being objective so objectivity and and brutal honesty yeah i, I felt like the, it, that balance yeah it's it's difficult to get objective opinions from people you know um which is which i always, I always find interesting because you know thinking about like my peer relationships like you like even you saying right honesty is your foundation right and right. i'm sure i'm sure that's not something that came about through music i'm sure that's something that's been the foundation throughout your whole life and like your friends and family know that about you but when it comes to something you love and passionate about they're like i, I don't i don't want to be honest with him in this in this sense right right um, right and, and maybe i think and I, I like hearing you talk about it i think maybe sometimes they don't have the the skill set or the language or the appreciation to like catch the things that matter to you, right? Like the, the everyday yeah. person, yeah, the everyday friend who isn't a music enthusiast, who isn't an audiophile, who um, isn't respectfully cultured or diverse, you know, they just they just focus on the drums while you got like five right. different layers behind <laughs> it. And you're like, yo, right. what, what about yeah. the piano? Like, give me yeah. some, they, like, there's always something, but it's right. just, you know, realizing your audience, right? Like who, who you yeah. who are you presenting it to? And the the goal in the artistry, right, is being able to connect with people who can provide feedback. So by the time it reaches the friends and family, it's already it's already hits by Jude, right? It's not right. Because to them and it, to them it's just a beat, but to right. you it's a hit, right? They're, oh, this is a dope beat, right? They don't they're not thinking about it as a as a as a hit. That's why no, I, yeah. they're not. They're not and. And I get that. It's either they like it or they don't. 
it's not all the intricacies that go into it or you know like you said that 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 language to to speak to it to the music is just hey it I, it hits me or not right so I like that I like that you said that that you uh expressed that because maybe someone could be listening to it and and maybe saying okay I have a music friend maybe I need to articulate it or or maybe the the artist on the the someone who's in my boat might need to understand that they just don't have that language right right right, right. That, that, that that is the challenge right um you know through you know through the joint project we're working on I also have I'm also I've also asked you to support me with like my first music project and that like that's always my concern and worry or this innate fear like people aren't being honest with me right like 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 that you know I wrote that verse to um that first intro track and you were like all right that's cool but give it a second give it a second try right like try a second verse and in my yeah. mind I'm like it, like is that is that an indirect way to saying the shit is whack <laughs> right yeah but, yeah but it's not for, it's not about ego right like it shouldn't matter right mm-hmm. like yeah for me the, like the other the, the layer after that is that you know you're, you're testing me and you're pushing you're pushing my my boundary as an artist to see if i can recreate um concepts and visuals and language even though i already feel like i'm good and settled so it was like a good a good test for who i need to be at times um and yeah and it, it builds it builds comfort in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I know Judah's gonna push me. I know Judah's gonna keep it a buck, and yeah, that, like that's the that's the type of professional relationship everyone should want. Absolutely, especially in this sometimes unprofessional space, where um, you know sometimes people might not be professional. So yeah, it's it's very important. All right, so. You said you so you found the magic. You transitioned into uh, building relationships and artists. When does uh when does Passport Bro Jude cut kick in? Uh-huh. Oh, like what what was your inspiration to leave the country and why Colombia? So Colombia came across. I came across Colombia on the internet, and um, what it sounds so it, simple, right? He said I found it yeah, on the internet. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> But it's funny because, again, music was able to help me connect with uh, artists. And there was an artist who had a, another producer of his uh, by the name of Lamont who was living in Colombia. And he was also a producer. And at this point in time in my producer career, I had felt like I needed a change. I needed something to to to, to kind of just focus on music full time. So Columbia seemed like one of those places where I could go and, and be a digital nomad and kind of live an affordable life while making music. It was kind of tough doing that in New York. So when my artist friend had mentioned Lamont, um, uh, this was like a year before I even got to Columbia. I didn't think much of it. And then I came across Columbia on the internet. And uh, that's when I connected with Lamont. And um, I came out here on the strength of just wanting to 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 do music full time and kind of kind of live outside of the United States. I always wanted to travel. That was in my first raps as a kid. Um, I have a bar where I say London, Japan, France. Um, I, c- I can't remember the full line, but like as a kid, you know, I always wanted to travel. I, I don't know, you know, every generation has their 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 thing. I think we're the generation that kind of wanted to see the world. My parents wanted to buy a house. You know, right. we got the house. I grew up in a home, a home under homeowners. Now it's like, kind of want to, uh, it's like I'm privileged in a way. And uh, it was kind of a way to exercise it. And and it, I heard it was, it was really on and popping out here. You know, like it, to talk about passport bros culture, it's like, guys were coming out here for the women and stuff like that. It's like, oh, the women are so beautiful. 
and the weather is so nice and all of that stuff. And uh, I, I just wanted to explore all things like curious about just being out here in a, in a different environment and seeing what it's like. It's dope that you brought up um, the privilege aspect. I think that I think that's real. And it's uh, it's like it's relative privilege. Right. Um, right. You know, I grew up in an apartment and growing up, I always wanted to move to Cali. Like Cali was my dream because I watched all these 80 movies and it was women we weather. Right. It's just, yo, sunshine, yep. women, uh, Hollywood, you know, in Hollywood, you can be anyone you want to be. You know, yep. it was wholly other from what the Brooklyn experience was. Oh. Very dirt and dirty and sheltered Ooh. and all of that. Man. And we eventually moved to a house um, when I was in the ninth grade. But by then, I, I already had my mind fixated on California because, mm -hmm. it, you know, those are like those are like my prominent years. Um, eventually, I ended up going to Argentina for my, my goal was to go there and just to start a new life. Right. Like I had a friend who lived out there who I, I know for like over a decade. Um, I had a job. I wasn't happy with it. So I resigned. I took a little bit of the money I had and I was like, hey, like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And she was like, yo, this, why don't you come down here? I said, I right. <laughs> like, like you said, just like, yo, like, just go for it. Like, why not? Just yeah. go for it. Um, and I remember like I, remember, I was broke. Like you talk about struggling. I was I was I was broke. Likewise. I was broke. I was broke. <laughs> I had to borrow like some money from one of my boys. And I remember when I got to customs, not customs, um, like the passport entry, they charged yes. me like two hundred dollars to get in. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, that's all that's all my money. I said, damn. Oh man. Um, oh man. So you know, I, I get there and <clears throat> Like I feel like like you, my mindset is just on a grind, right? Like I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to build something for myself. Absolutely. So I'm on Craigslist back when Craigslist was popping. I'm looking for jobs. Um, like I interview for a job. Yeah, yeah, we'll call you back. We'll call you back. Nothing. I interview for like a teaching position, a, a, a English teaching position. Um, wow. And the woman was like, you know, I don't like she. She don't trust. She didn't trust Americans because they always stay but then they 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 always take the job and then they just kind of leave abruptly and i'm, I'm like yo like that what does that have to do with me <laughs> like, oh, like, yo, like I'm, I'm 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 about business but you know they right. they, they don't believe in you um, yeah and it was it, it, it was overall it was a dope experience and like one of the most important things i learned through that experience was like the the c concept and the experience of familiar love um you know, I come from a distorted Haitian household, so I've mm -hmm. I've never really seen uh, grandparents together. I, I just had my grandfather. My friend, you know, she was a single mother. She had a daughter. Um, she had a brother, and her father and mother were together. And just watching like the grandparents interact with their daughter, seeing them like have their little tiffs, but always reconcile. It was like holy new to me. I'm like, holy shit, like this this is what family love is supposed to be yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. And I came back just kind of more appreciative for my family, for people. Um, so like wondering what 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 have what's what, like what's been some humbling or like some real awe-inspiring realizations living in Colombia for yourself, a family, mm -hmm. like anything. No, I'm, I'm, uh, thank you for that that question. It, it it's you know our stories are similar. I came out here, and it's it's like the culture shock and and kind of being broke, and um, just learning that, you know, I live now with a group of people who aren't family, but they fight for each other, and no matter what happens, you know, ups and downs. They've got each other's back. And that's the real Columbia. That all the nightlife stuff that everyone is showing on YouTube, you know, once you get past all that stuff and you start learning the language, you know, um, you really start to understand the, the family aspect to it. And what that's given me is that, you know, I, I I've healed not completely but to 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 a great extent i've healed some of the relationships back home um which with some distance i credit distance right. um to it but also um 
it's just seeing how other people navigate and kind of see, like you said, I grew up in a, a distorted Haitian family household as well. Um, and, and just seeing ter- certain situations, of course, like to this day, I see it didn't have to go down like that, certain things back home, but it did. And we can move forward now. And, um, Columbia has definitely opened up my personality as far as just uh, seeing that love kind of starts with me. You know, is I was robbed out here. So after that situation, it was very, very sour, a very sour time. Um, I was questioning all the relationships that I had, who might have set me up. And... Um, but through it, it, it's just like, I can't walk around feeling like everyone is untrustworthy. Right, right. You know, of course, I keep my head on my on a swivel. But I think me carrying that energy perpetuates that that feeling like I have to keep my head on the swivel. If I If I give that energy out, it bounces back and then... Now I'm looking at that person like something's wrong with you. No, you, I started it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, That's my real. country, and you're walking around here like, yo, should I be worried about you? You know, this is this is the environment. But uh, it's all love. It's all love. Um, not all all love, like with everyone, but right. um, I've been able to find my way. What are your general feelings about passport bro culture? Um, and you know, I'm I'm thinking, I, I always think about the parallels in our lives. You know, yeah. um, you know, I, I moved to Argentina in 2012, so you know, I can, I'm like original. Pa- I'm like a passport bro uh, alpha. You know, I'm like the original man, no, Omega. It omega. Been, <laughs> yeah, it must have been on fire at that time, man. Um, and a, a lot of it was it, it was a lonely experience. Um, yeah. Cause you know, although I had my 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 female friend, you know, I was living in a hostel, and I feel like you know, being from New York or being Haitian, right? You know, you flood it, right? Wherever you go, you flood it. You yeah. go out, you explore. Yeah. You, I remember I walk like two hours to get some Chinese food because like I didn't have anything else to do, so I'm not I'm not gonna right. sit home and be miserable and sad. Like I'm gonna go explore. I'm gonna learn the city as much as I could. Yeah, I was working on my Spanish a little bit. I was a little bit. I was my Spanish was improving naturally, um, but it was a, it was a lonely experience, and for me it was lonely because there weren't any black people. Um, the only f- few black people I've seen were like the African, uh, like Africans on the African vendors. I think that's the best way to say African vendors, and maybe like one black soccer player. And I feel like a lot of current ca- passport bro culture is about like escaping blackness. And that's not something I ever wanted to do. Like I, I didn't, I didn't, although, you know, the, the black experience is traumatizing and, and it's draining. Um, I didn't go there to escape blackness and to be immersed in, uh, you know, whiteness essentially. So yep. wondering like, you know, what, what's your perspective on passport bro culture and how do you like honor your, honor your culture, your Haitian culture? while still being out there, your black culture, while still being out there. You know, like Argentina must have been rough because it's definitely, it's kind of like that here too. Um, And what I do to kind of honor the cultures, I always mention to people like, um, yes, I am American. I'm proud to be American, but my family are Haitians as well. We grew up with a very strong culture. So I always ex- explain like a lot of my values come from Haitian culture right. um, in these spaces. And there's a connection between Colombia and Haiti. Uh, a lot, a lot uh, if it goes further back. Uh, well, I, I, I don't want to say that. I don't know if it goes further back, but there's a strong connection between the two countries and they honor the, that, that aspect as well. So, and I always make sure that mentioned that my folks are immigrants in America. So um, they made something out of themselves in a country that's that's kind of hard to, to make it out. So I'm proud of 
my Haitian culture. And I hope one day to make it there. Uh, the experience here is is lonely. Um, so what I've done to navigate that was really step step away from the passport bros that 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 the the, the popular um, uh, concept of what a passport bro is. A lot of these guys, yeah, they are trying to escape blackness. They are trying to find, uh, so to say, you know, better women. Uh, and they, they go to these cultures and they, they kind of leave a stain on what it what an American uh, person is supposed to, to, to be like. But I try to uphold uh, what I believe to be an upstanding uh, Haitian American. And I do that by like learning the language. I went to school out here to kind of like fill up my days. So that was one thing that took up in the two years that I've been here there was a year where I was I was studying Spanish I was like a student um I I got into reggaeton uh I, I there's a great African uh African Afro-Colombian uh group out here so I've been able to connect with some of those people they're actually some of my better friends out here and um and just just trying to connect with that community and seeing how we can bridge the gap. Um, that's been able to make the experience a lot better for me. How I, I, I still consider myself a passport bro in the sense that I'm using my passport to go and learn different cultures and bring my culture and, and bring myself to, to these people. You know, I don't know if I told you this, um, but I, I picked up a waitering gig nice. uh, out here for a few hours of, of the day. So a lot of the people, you know, they'll see me, they'll think, oh, he's an African Colombian kid. And then they'll hear my Spanish and they'll be like, yo, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from New York. And that fit like every time it's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what do you, you don't need this. Right, but right, right. for me, it was like, I was friends with, with the, 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 the son of the the restaurant it's a family business and uh he speaks english cool kid um so i said hey why not i'm here a lot of people come here and just kind of like throw money around and 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 you know they're kind of like vultures on the yeah. culture let me contribute to the environment and and i never never would have thought like a, a year ago if you told me i'd be waiting tables at a restaurant in Columbia, I'd never believe you. One guy, a foreigner guy from Miami, uh, we've been able to become friends. He told me, like, no one is doing what you, this is unheard of. No one is doing this. You know, but for me, it's like, why not? You know, why not? Like, I came out here struggling. I wanted a different experience. I did all the party stuff. The, the culture shock, I, I went through the fire with, you know, people who didn't want me to be here. Um, it's like, like I said, like it's, it's, there's this, the energy I give out, it's always going to come back. So it's kind of been a, a little more steady through that what's, process. What's been a, um, what's been a culture shocking moment for you that like kind of hit, caught you off guard or like made you miss made you miss home for a second <laughs> man oh man should i how should i say this the pe like the people around my way they are they are like neighborhood watchers in brooklyn <laughs> it's like it's kind of like everyone is minding their business if you're right. on the wrong block of course you're on the wrong block but man it's like they are very protective of their environment. Sometimes I wish we were like that in Canarsie, you mm -hmm. know, in a good way, in a positive, holistic way. It could be intimidating here, but that was definitely something that that was just. It, it's the way that it happens too. They, it's not like what are you doing here? Get they'll get to know you. They'll they'll like reel you in, like hey. If you're gonna be here, you gonna be you gotta be here. Right. You gotta, you gotta then, contribute to the to the community, like socially. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Right. And that feels like that quickly makes you decide, you know what, I kind of want to go back home. <laughs> I'm okay. I see, right, I see right, what's, right. you know, it always feels like, you know, man, it's, it's a tough environment. Like, you either do something with us or we're going to send somebody for you. <laughs> like, right. it just feels like that sometimes. But yeah, it's, um, it feels like there's like I, I may be uh I may be thinking too deeply, but I feel like there's an app, you know, like that everyone just has and they keep they just drop all of the news in there and like it feels like everyone knows what's going on. When I first started working at the restaurant, there would be people who, who would come and they would be like, Alex, I'm like, how do you know my name? Like I'm like, oh man, this is this is spooky, you know. There's, there's there's no what you're doing again is I guess is groundbreaking, right? Like you're you're the the rarity. Um, I feel like Lamont too. Like he's immersed in oh, the culture because sure. he's been there for a minute. It's not it's not for being an introvert, right? Like if you want to be an introvert and be reclusive, stay ass in the United States, man. Because that that's how flies. they look at us. That's right, how they right. they view us. Like all oh, these introverts who have no personality. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's like Jesus Christ. So I I only lasted one month in Argentina before my money ran out. Um, well, two things happened. Number one, my money ran out, but I also realized what I wanted to do. Like my goal, like I was on Craigslist looking for jobs. I was like, you know what? I want to work in a college. So it just it like it it, it balanced out perfectly, and I was on a flight back to um, New York after that. How long How long have you been in Colombia? Uh, it's, it's a year and nine months. That's 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 so salute, yeah. man. You, you that's, that's I had uh... a lot of help. <laughs> I had guys that have been here for like ten years, and you were doing it at a time when there were really a lot of foreigners. Like this place is flooded with us on this side now. You and know, no, a no lot of people can come here now. Right. Yeah, oh, that's also something oof, to consider. Right. It, was, it was, must yeah. have been rough. Yeah, I left. I left in a month. It was the, Man, yo, that's rough. that's that. Is, I couldn't do it. I, I mean, if you look at my situation, I probably should have left it after a month. <laughs> but I was holding on, like I want to make music. Yeah. And you, you, know? you, you, and and I, I think that's that's also part of it, right? Like, like the the perseverance and um, being lin- linear, more linear focused. Like you, you went down there with. You already you already had like music in mind. You already had a focus in mind. I went down there hoping to find more of like my life discovery and what I wanted to do. Um, I, I was also thinking of ten years ago. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was also thinking it, it's weird. It's funny how you know two Haitian boys from Brooklyn go yeah. to South America. Like you know we just skip over Haiti. We're like, ah, fuck, fuck that. Place, man. man, I, I want to go, but. But but knowing that, right, like if things were different, like if 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 there was progress, right, like, you know, we could have been passport bros in, in Haiti, right? And like I'd never leave. <laughs> like, I'd right? never leave. I set up shop. I set up shop. That's the dream. I that's the fuel. Yeah. You know, the closest was DR. I always entertained it, but it's it was always to get close to Haiti. You know, I wanted to know why is my mom the way she is? Why is my right. dad the way he is? I don't, I don't understand it. You know, we just see them in the New York environment. Right, 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 right. But who Haiti is the dream. Haiti still, it still lives yeah. for me. That's the ultimate passport, bro. Move. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, so we got a few min- minutes left. Um, kind of want to talk about where you are right now with music. And then transition into like so, some advice for up and coming artists. Um, yeah, yeah, wh- wh- wherever you want to start and lead. So right now I'm in the nurturing phase. I'm a teacher, nurturer, um, and I just want to maximize artists' uh, career. I have, you know, I'm working with you. I'm working with another artist by the name of Kyle Bethel. He's he's new to just music entirely, and I, I I'm in a belief that anyone could learn. 
the skills that it takes to learn how to rap or if it's to make beats if you want. Um, Sydney Renee, she's she was just strictly singer. Now she makes her own beats and she always encourages me to start some sort of course. I really don't know if I, I want to do it. At, hey, I'm just going to see if it comes to me, but my uh, desire is really in just maximizing uh, artist potential. And um, that's that's where I'm at. And the other question you said, well, I'll, I'll lead in, lead into it a bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned that, you know, I, I still call myself an aspiring artist because there's nothing there, well, not, like nothing, um, nothing published officially to like for me gotcha. to kind of make that claim. And I think <laughs> I'm I'm all over because I'm trying to find, I'm aware of my challenges, right? Like one thing you told me that has always stuck with me was, was the pocket, the pocket, the pocket, the pocket, finding the pocket and staying in it. And at times I'll find the pocket and then it just kind of dissipates. And then I'll feel motivated and inspired. And then like my swag is off and then my swag is off for a few days. So like, what's your word of advice to artists who are trying to boost their confidence in music for the first time, who are trying to, um, I guess also find their identity. Like I, I genuinely believe like I'm a dope writer. Like I look at my lyrics and I'm like, you know, like yeah. I give myself that head yeah. nod. For but sure. I can't, I can't, I can't live, I can't live in the music yet. I think that's that's my challenge, right? I'm, I'm not finding myself living in a, in a lot of the music music yet. So what's the advice to me and other artists like that? I would say like whoever your your favorite artist is, listen to them. Any artist that might, uh, you know, listen to everyone, but really study the ones that you feel are just like amazing and get, keep build up that curriculum with artists that are better than that artist. So, so if your favorite artist is Adele, that should be like the standard that you should be a student of Adele. Let, sprinkle around a few other artists but the ones that you feel are just like i can't compete with that compete with that artist okay I and like and just elevate yourself elevate yourself th through that and create as much as you can like you said earlier we were saying about the writing the second verse Part of it, for some artists, it may be that, hey, I didn't like it, but part of it, it's really like, okay, you got this one verse. It was cool. If you did a second one, now you can choose between the two. And if you have a third, you know, you could you could choose between the three. And it's, and, and it's kind of a way to stay away from this bad habit that a lot of us who, who uh, you know, just been doing it naturally we we kind of like just make a song and this is the song that's gonna be out one take hold, like, right <laughs> right like you're not you know, hold, you're not we hold. don't want this habit we don't <laughs> i i gotta do like two three verses of a beat these days before i, I publish it because beats make it wasn't natural to me i had to learn it so um quantity but put a lot put out the quality create in quantity and uh, study the ones that absolutely like I saw NPR Sam Smith uh, and I'm like his vocals like make it seem like no one else can sing so if if you're a singer you have to kind of just in a way study study how he delivers his performance what makes him great so it, it inspires you to make better music not to discourage you, but it's like, like I want to be Bruno Mars level. Right. I may not get there, but I'm reaching. I'm pulling myself up, and uh, yeah, just 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 constantly keep that baseline. Once Bruno is no longer the standard, uh, or any artist, whoever you deem to be that that standard, for me as as a rapper. It's no longer Jay Z, Nas, Drake. It's it's Benny the Butcher. Like 
he he's raw like his his versatility is just like no that he may not be the world uh biggest rapper but he's he's like my standard if i could get as good as him then i could look at the next best thing and right. Right. without even realizing i'm i'm as good as the people i look up to effortlessly right right yeah yeah i like that um all right, yeah. so what what can the people find you? How can they connect with you? Um, or or, or, your, or your your platforms and connectivity options? I've just been getting back on social media. Uh, I took some time off. I'm back on Instagram and TikTok, uh, and YouTube, all under Hits by Jude. Uh, that's Hits by and Jude J U D E. Uh. Not on Twitter, but I'm basically on all the the bigger platforms. You can find me on there. Uh, the website is coming soon. Uh, I still have a, a lot of beats that I would love to place. So that's also a great way to c- connect with me. Uh, if you have interest in beats, uh, that's a great way to connect uh, and create music uh, right away. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm online. Maybe it's it's also. Not con- not them reaching out to make to connect with beats, but if they want hits, they should hit you up, right? If they, right. If they, if they right. want beats, they can go to someone else. If they want hits, right. they, they come to you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. The nurturing, the nurturing, the whole experience. You know, I, I was thinking of starting an academy, but that that's something I have to get started right away if I want to do it. Right, right, right. All right, man. Yo, I appreciate your time, man. It, it's 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 funny that you know. Again, after all the, after all this time, we still learn all these small things and similarities. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> man. It's life. like we live the same life. You know, I I could go to you for a lot of these these uh questions that I've had. And what was dope for me is like seeing you go through it at a younger age, and yeah. it makes me believe that you're gonna find it sooner. So yeah. For me, you're like a gateway to the to the past, and I, I, yeah, yeah, you're like a gateway gateway to uh, find, finding solutions quicker, staying relevant. All right, man. I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you for 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 letting me having me on and talk about all this stuff, man. I appreciate it. No doubt, man. All right, peace. All right, peace. Take care.